Right mud lovers, I hope you're doing well and staying safe in lockdown just like me. Now usually I'll bring you some mudlarking videos which means going around the Thames foreshore when the tide goes out looking for anything old and interesting. So check out my old videos if you want to see any of that. I've still got some old footage that I want to show you but first I had to show you what's inside this box. Now I moved in 2014 and I put loads of lovely mudlarking and metal detecting finds inside this box. Even a few gifts that were given to me by my old friend John Webb. I thought I'd lost it, although I knew I'd had it, but I didn't know where it was. So, this is the first time it's been opened in over six years. So I'm really excited about what's to be found inside. So, without further ado, let's go and have a quick look, see what we can find in the old box of mystery. Here we go. Old finds. Whoa. All wrapped up for transport. I can see spoons and clay pipes. Now look, this something over here has gone wrong. See, that's, something's perished. I don't know if you can make work that out. You can see that from there, but look, something has gone wrong. It's a nice clay pipe, but something's happened inside this box to make it go all funny. It, despite me putting it nice and uh, safe inside a newspaper. You know, let's get, let's get all the bits and bobs out and have a look. So this is a nice clay pipe. Oh weird, it's like it's actually crusted on there. Strange. Okay, well that's one clay pipe. Put it over there. You can see the stuff coming out. Some spoons. I've got no idea where I found these. They've, been, they've both got stamps on them. See that's got... um. 1686 which isn't the date it's just going to be i think it's a military one that got a little little broad arrow there which is really cool it's got 1940 as well the date i don't remember finding it don't remember that still pretty cool find though that's a nice spoon and another one here again it's got a military arrow so maybe i found these in the same place when i first started mudlarking but uh Cannot remember. In fact, you can just make out there's a little name there, a little N, I think, and some numbers imprinted on there. Long number. Might even be able to work out who's got that number, that army number. But it's very unlikely. But it's still a pretty cool find. Definitely an army spoon. Again, got the broad arrow there. Two spoons. So what else we got in a box of mystery finds? Well, another spoon. Look, it's gone black. It's got a lovely decoration on that. God, I cannot for the life of me remember where I found that. Still pretty cool though. Might have a little, um, in fact, I just think they're just there. Just see that? Just there. It looks like a little monogram. Nice spoon. Okay, what else we got? Obviously you can see pipes there. I've got another spoon. I think that's probably just a plain plain teaspoon, but again I don't know why it's gone black. It's got uh, ooh, it's got on it um on the back. Pleuro silver on that. Nice little teaspoon. Don't know why it's black. I'm try and work out the culprit of uh, why this has all gone a bit funny. Something around there has gone a bit funny. And I think, looking at it, it looks like it is a piece of petrified wood. Which basically means a fossilised piece of wood that's just crumbled into nothing. And look, you can probably all see that just standing there. It's a beautiful echinoid. That hasn't really suffered much. That's quite nice, I might display that. Again, forgot I had that. I think... Can I remember finding that? Not really, but still. Beautiful uh, fossil there of a sea urchin. Anyway, what else have we got? Lovely clay pipes there, look. That one's got a bunch of grapes on it. Nice. Another decorated bowl there. Okay. Another pipe bowl. I can't remember what, where I found that. There we go, look at that one. That's a beauty, isn't it? I'm not sure what that stands for. 
might it might pop up on the bottom of the screen if I've done a little bit of research before this comes out. There we go. Right. <clears throat> what is that? Oh yeah, that's um I don't remember it being in here, but this is a lead palm guard. So if you were sewing, you put that into your palm of your hand like that. So when you sew your fabrics, you're not busting your hands with needles. Yeah, I think it's probably this might come off a field, maybe it comes on the Thames, I don't know. But yeah, quite a nice little palm guard there. Time for a sip of tea. Well, there's some stuff in some wrapping paper which I'm looking forward to getting into. A random piece of bone, looks like it would have been a rib bone off an animal, I don't know why that's in there. I must have thought it was interesting at the time. <laughs> More pipe bowls. Nice uh, 16, uh, 16th century one, oh sorry, 17th century, 1620, that sort of age. Um, another decorated one, oh that's like a, ma a Masonic one. That's nice. You see that there, look, that's the Masonic sign there. Again with some Latin maybe around and some stars, a little sun. Oh, and there's probably the Welsh coat of arms there as well. Maybe it's the Welsh Masons. Okay, what else have we got in the box of mystery? Another clay pipe there, nice fluted design. Oh, a little diddy one, that's really cool. That's even earlier than that one. I thought that was 1620s, that last one, but look, look at the size of that, that's really small. That's probably, that's probably bordering on 16th, 16th century, this one, just about. Not quite the earliest fairy pipes, but pretty close to it very 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 early pipes would have had a very small bowl because tobacco is so expensive cool and there it is in comparison oh look another clay let's get the clay pipes out of the way another simple clay pipe there oh i found a nice little find i didn't know i've forgotten about that oh i just found something which i haven't found in ages brilliant this is so cool right if you can see in there Oh, I found loads of stuff, didn't know where half this stuff was. How cool is that? Yes. A bit too close there. I just found loads of stuff I thought I'd lost and never seen again. This is such a cool box of finds. This is what I really, really can't remember putting anywhere. See that? Little charm. See this little charm? I was going to record with the museum, but I don't know if they if they wanted it in the end. Now what it is, it's um it's a little like a little African fertility charm. I thought I'd lost it. So look at him or her, should I say? She's got a, she's got breasts and a little bump, a little, little bump there. Oh, and that's so cool. Look, I, I'm not sure how old that is. It could be modern or it could be old. Um, I think I showed the museum or the flow. I can't remember what they said, but I think they decided it was modern. But I still got a feeling it's, it's old. There's a couple of examples online of that, and they're only ones I can find are old. A little African fertility charm. Lovely. Alright, what next? That is a yeah, broken cannonball there. It's a split where the, where the uh, water's trying to escape over the years. I think it's a cannonball. Yeah, looks like it. A little cannon shot. Okay, what next? Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, there's something inside there as well. This is really nice find <clears throat> it's actually a uh, powder measure so when you wanted to shoot something from your musket you fill up this powder measure to the top and empty it oh great one of my neighbors decided to start doing some drilling so uh never mind i'll carry on Again, I'm not sure what that is. Looking at it now, looking... Right, back in a minute when he stops his drilling. Oh. So this powder measure, we had a little hook there as well, so that uh, it, it could be hung off of your um, off your belt. And inside it is a little, uh, looks like a little coin or token. So I spoke to my mate Cuffs and he told me that this is a Byzantine coin. It was made in around the year 550. Uh, Justinian was the emperor at the time, and quite a rare coin. 
nothing on the back just a nice cross on the front okay let's open one of these bags oh it's like christmas day here you go whoa about that for a clay pipe <laughs> there we go look at that now i have to admit i didn't find this on the foreshore i got it from a friend in fact i got it from john webb he gave it to me or i think i bought it off him i don't know uh but he he i'm not sure if he found it or uh or whatever but this is such a cool pipe look at the size of that bad boy and it would have been used probably as an advertising piece or maybe in a shop front or a salesman's piece they would go around and say this is the new design in pipes look at the detail you can get and uh if you can see there look it's a little football and a boot kicking it so when football was first being invented here in uh, in england around 1880 that sort of time this pipe probably is turn of the century and uh yeah quite a uh, novelty item how cool is that again i was wondering where this was <laughs> <laughs> now I know. See, this is all part of the petrified wood. It's just getting in the way now. And that's another, I think. Yeah, that's like another powder cup. Hmm. Lead toy. A black coin. Dated 1773. It's not black. Should be should be lovely in brass, but it's George the third. George the third coin again turned black through that strange uh, petrified wood. Just seen loads of stuff in there, including a ring. But first, uh, here's a little seal that I found. It. See, that's got an impression there of a, of a lion. It's really nice. Probably deserves to be on display rather than in the box. Not not great age to it, probably Georgian. Still nice though, very nice. But look, look at this. See that ring there? I don't know why it's got. Look, it's, it was a buckle. It's like it's almost caught fire or something. So strange. It had this like chemical reaction. But look, that ring there. It's nice, isn't it? Oh, it's gone a bit funny with it as well. Um, again, this isn't very old. It's uh, probably an Indian offering ring, found in East London somewhere. Um, sometimes it's uh, customs, customary to throw in costume jewellery. Pretty though, I might clean it up, put it with my other ones. Right, what else can you see? Can you see anything there that looks good? There's a thing at the bottom there, but I can see a coin. What was that? Oh, that's not my find. I I bought that. That's that, apparently that's the medieval seal ring, but who knows? That's just a purchase. I'm going to be honest with you and say that I bought that. That's a nice little uh, item, possibly a medieval seal matrix ring. I bought it at a fair because I like the look of it. Whether it's genuine or not, who knows? But I think I paid like ten quid for it. Could be real. I see there's a. Uh, coin there this is taking a lot long, long, longer than I thought <laughs> um, another coin there again I'll rush through these a little bit quicker um, oh good that man's back that's another so it's George III half penny can't quite make a date out on that one but it'd be 17 70 thereabouts okay what we got next <laughs> social social hammersmith club little badge there okay next find okay, there's another ring oh wow i thought i'd lost that that is so cool this find. i've got to tell you about this so I was at the one part of the foreshore thinking, oh, I wonder what's over there. Um, there wasn't a lot really, but I detected this ring. It's a Royal Artillery uh, ring, but it's actually a silver uh, K 
cat badge or it's a badge that has been made out of silver and it's basically a sweetheart ring so this would have been given to someone when they went to war as a reminder to look after them in fact it's broken <sighs> i might get my friend wendy to repair that and clean it up i've been wondering where this was for ages this box is brilliant anyway there we go it's a little bit river worn because obviously it's been in the river for a while i don't think there's any hallmarks or anything in it that's the uh, you can see how crude it is from that that angle it's been very um amateur amateurishly made but that's the beauty of it and there was um there's a, a basically that's a cannon and a wheel and it's probably the latin which i'll tell you a bit more information about that I'm really happy i found that again it's gone all black cool this is the box that keeps on giving okay what we've we got next can you see that and that's just a spindle whirl so that would have been probably medieval post medieval any any old time would have been uh, put on a stick and um used to create wool and wind wool up i don't know what that is that's probably something which I thought was quite interesting, but I don't know what that is. Yeah, not sure exactly what that is, but I'm for God knows what. So this is a little mystery item. I have no idea what it is. Uh, all I know is it's got a little foot on one side with a hole in it and something on the other side, which I, I cannot work out what it is. It might be a religious scene or something. Maybe it's off a crucifix. Um, again, I, I've got no idea on that. And Flo wasn't interested in it either. This is a piece of Metropolitan slipwear. It was made in Harlow in Essex in 1630 to 1720. The slip was used to make geometric patterns and sometimes even mottos. This information was sourced from Richard Henry's Pottery ID book. Check out the description below for a link for the PDF. Let's get that out. That's an impression. Oh look, that's an impression of the um of the lion in a piece of clay. It's pretty nice, isn't it? Excellent. Right. Should we open another piece of newspaper? Again, I don't know what this is. Actually, do you know what? I know what that is. I know I can, by the feel of it, I remember what it is. This is another thing that Webby gave me. And again, I was wondering where this had got to. You ready for the reveal? This is a John Webb find. It's going to be good. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> it's a handle off a sword. How cool is that? It's um, obviously for using the military. Obviously used at sea. Officer's sword maybe. And it's really cool because it's got a, a lion's head. Holding it there, look. Imagine what this had seen. This wasn't a Thames find. He found this in a field. Um, and I just liked it. <laughs> so I bought it off him. Not a lot of money. Be good to get this restored by someone who knows what they're doing. But it's, it's so fragile. It's, it's going to break there at one point. So, um, And that's all steel there in the middle. Lovely find though, isn't it? Imagine if that could talk. Imagine if any of these finds could talk, what they would tell us. Still with some gilding left over. I looked this crown up once and I think it's probably, I think it might be Edwardian. Don't know, I'll have to double check. But it's quite hard to work out what that crown is. If anybody knows for sure on what this would have come from and the age of it, uh, please leave a comment in the description. I love uh, hearing um, hearing what you guys can find out. Right, well, that's all that's left. There's still plenty of finds in there. In amongst all that stuff. I'm hoping this is what I hope it is, and I think it is. And I've been looking for this for, for ages again. I'm just so glad I found this box. 
it is well this is a really really special find look at that it's a bronze age axe and i was with john webb again uh, and he found this in the field and he gave it to me it's not complete it's obviously missing a big bit there but i'm so happy i found it again so this is yeah so this axe is uh 1000 to 2000 bc so getting on for three to four thousand years so this bronze age axe was made around 1000 to 2000 bc which means it's nearly three to four thousand years old and the fact that it's still you know relatively intact is absolutely amazing i really wish i'd found this myself but i was literally 20 meters away from john when he found it um so i was there when it came up out of the ground so that's that's good enough for me and uh yeah he kindly gave it to me as he's a true gentleman and i think he's found a few in the past so uh for him it was uh not first so he, he kindly gave it to me lovely stuff so there's still some good finds in there i'm going to show you quickly what's left let's go for the fossil i don't know if, where i found that could be in this country or could have got it on, on one of my holidays i don't know lovely little um ammonite yeah don't think it was in the thames think it might have been from a field and just spotted it or maybe even a beach i have to try and remember that one um this is a lovely silver thimble pretty sure i found this one detecting um again i was i was wondering where this stuff had gone this sort of comes up in your in your mind a little bit and you think where did that go i swear i found one of these before it does for me anyway and uh yeah it's beautifully cast there you can see that that's got a yeah, beautiful pattern again i wonder if wendy can reshape that but then again should all finds be made brand new or should they be left in the state they were found i suppose if they're not that old then um why not restore them a little bit eh Okay, what else have we got? That's a nice um, pen nib. Definitely a Thames find that. In fact, I could use that now, I reckon. It says on it, um, Magnivan Cameron. Oh, it's stainless number 2F it is, number 2F. If there was any uh, deeds or anything written with that. Right, you may have noticed that there's these uh, strange little uh, weird looking things there. I'm going to pick them all up. I think there's just four of them, five of them. They're quite interesting because uh, they look really old and ancient. Um, but in fact, they're just modern. We find them all in one place. I haven't found any in a long time. But um, they're all put there in one particular spot on the foreshore and me and my friends picked quite a few, a few of these up um, and we think they're religious offerings put in the river maybe Hindu, Buddhist, don't know but if you recognise any of these little symbols please let me know I'd love to find out more about them they were, they were shown to the museum and they, they uh, passed them off as, as modern despite their crude look because I think they were made you know probably by hand by someone never seen anything like it since though so they're not like they're common Indian or friends or anything they are quite beautiful really they do look medieval which made everyone stumped cool all right put them down another coin so this is a little dump issue Georgian coin Georgian farthing don't know why it's gone like that colour for it's just bizarre some chemical reaction in that fossilised petrified wood turned a lot of things black oh look there we go that's not a coin I thought that was a coin it's actually a, <laughs> a little enamel button and it reads I am a cocoa cub it says 
buy him a Coco Cub. Imagine if that was the most valuable thing in there in terms of rarity. They only made 20 of them. Well, there's another coin there. I'm going to show you that quickly. That looks like a field find because it's got that sort of hue about it. Again, I can't work out what that is. Again, it's probably a Georgian coin. Bit, bit worse to wear. Just went in the box. Rough around the edges. Again, look at that weird patination that's occurred. Crazy. Little button there. Oh, that's nice. A nice little uh, regimental button there. And I think it's got... Uh, it'll be, um, you know, I think it's a 36, maybe, 36 regiment of foot or something like that. Nice 19th century pewter button. The box that just keeps on giving. This thing, might need your help identifying this thing. I thought, when I found it, it was definitely a fossil. But um, I don't know what a fossil of. Looks to me like it might be a fossilised piece of poo. So yeah, if anybody knows what this is, I'm pretty sure it's a fossil. It's definitely got a stony feel to it. It's very hard and tough, just like a stone. Yeah, please let me know. I'll try my best to research some of the stuff. And if you want to chime in, then uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Any fossil experts out there? I think I did know at one point what this was, but I can't remember for life of me what it is. Anybody know what that could be? A little guess the find. It's got a little W on the bottom. It's made from the same sort of clay that the clay pipes are made from. If you've been watching my uh, channel for a while now, you probably know that that is a wig curler. Half of a wig curler, should I say. So that would have been double the size there. Up to about there. And used to curl one's wigs in Georgian times. So, nice little half wig curler. Again, I knew I'd found one before somewhere, but now I've just discovered it again. Right. This. This is pewter. And I don't really know what it is. Things like this would have been used to making toys. Pewter plates, which I've got a, I've got a pewter plate. It's got some little stars on that side, so um, I'm going to ask my mate Cuffs if he knows, because he loves pewter. Um, it could be, a, it could be a, a clock face, maybe I don't know. But um, have a close look, and it could just be a bit of nothing. But it's one of those things I kept just in case it turned out to be something good. Yeah, I'll let you know if uh, if I find out what it is, I'll it'll be on the bottom of the screen. It's got little stars going around it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Little St. Little David stars. St. David stars? Yeah, little St. David stars. Okay. That looked like, um, it looked like a thimble, but it's not. It's the, it's the end of something. Probably the end of an umbrella or something like that. Parasol, maybe. Again, can't really remember finding that. Brass, so not, not gold despite appearances. Yeah, the end cap of something. Might have a bit of age to it, might be Georgian, might be a bit earlier. Quite crude. Little button there. Actually, it's more of a mount. A uh, mount to go on some leather, probably. It's a bit chunky on the back. Could be a button. But it looks like it's been studded and then snapped off something. Another little button there. Not particularly old, probably like Victorian or 20th century. Might be older. Could even be a cufflink. That's like copper. Excuse the dirty hands. That's what you get for rummaging through old finds. They got this plaque here. Oh look, I made a really naff attempt to weld it back together. <laughs> Using solder. That's quite nice though. Look, it says Seaman Brothers on it. I think what happened is it was folded in half. I unfolded it and it snaps. And I felt so bad I thought I should try and repair it. So I've done a really naff solder. But saying that, it's actually lasted. Seaman Brothers and Co. Limited, London. A little bit of an anchor toy. Lead toy. Ah, that's quite interesting. It could be a Roman key 
or medieval key or finger key it's, it's um, the only thing is I think it might be oh, it might be I don't know if what it is it could be a key it looks like it because it's got that tiny little bit there on it look and it, you put it on your finger if you had little fingers and it wasn't so corroded and it would just hang on your finger when you needed it again not entirely sure that is exactly what it is but I can't think of anything else unless it's just a piece of a uh, piece of junk but could be medieval hmm something or other it's got that familiar look about it it could be brochy but I don't know again I think that's, that was from the field perhaps a detecting find it looks like it's quite zoomorphic doesn't it in the way that it looks like a a snake or lizard and this is just part of a latch well, one little coin there oh it's a, it's a silver coin oh is it yeah it is a silver coin there look Victoria young head so it's probably either a Maundy penny or a Maundy threepence maybe a Maundy coin is uh, the coins they issued to give to the poor an Easter I think it was so that's quite apt isn't it yeah nice little coin again no idea where I found that and I think the last find from the box that keeps on giving is a is a buckle and look you can see how it's really strange how that reaction has taken that look at that how that buckle has got really quite corroded luckily this buckle isn't particularly old <laughs> or rare it's um, probably a <laughs> mm, early 20th century maybe it's like it might be I'm not sure if it's a bird it's just a, a floral pattern maybe Victorian um, I don't know, it's a small utilitarian buckle. In a way, I'm glad I saved all this stuff before um, it got even worse. Oh look, there's a little foot in there. <laughs> little foot of a doll maybe. Or a little soldier. It's got a little rivet there, so it would have been part of a, a little toy. Probably not a soldier just a little dull person All right any more for any more oh yeah that's pretty cool just found something else I didn't know what I'd done with now look this is recorded I'm pretty sure it is recorded yeah with a uh, with pass and look you see that date on there it says 1577 and we don't know what this is we possibly think it might be part of a purse but again it's a mystery find that no one really knew what it was it's got a little loop at the top and a strange little um two little and two little sides there to clasp something yeah another mystery find there that no one really knows what it is which we get so many of I do remember finding this I was quite excited actually because I didn't know what it was and neither did anybody else a little decoration there with a, like a zigzag going around it we've done a little wheel or something it almost looks like it's a scabbard end a scabbard tip a chape a scabbard chape but I think it is a scabbard chape but someone said why would you why would you date it so I don't know maybe it was it could even be a pilgrim's thing pilgrim's badge maybe part of an ampulla something to contain holy water the jury's out I'm glad I found that well another find just found a little shoe and do you know what it says on the bottom it says on it lucky boot a yeah, good one to finish on good luck in the muck for me or should I say luck in the box a bit more of that um, definitely come from this look this is part of that petrified wood fossilised wood that is crumbling 
and that's what has been that's what's made all this stuff turn black i'm just wrapping some of this stuff up and it occurred to me to have a look at the date on the newspaper to see when i wrapped all this stuff up for safekeeping and as you can see there i found it in february 2014. so how mad is that it's been in that box for six years no wonder i couldn't find any of it all right my lovers i hope you enjoyed that video there'll be plenty more mudlarking videos coming up in the future so stay tuned for that now maybe you was wondering if this could actually be smoked and it can there's actually a hole that goes all the way through it i forgot to mention that but that's pretty cool i could actually spark this up now and smoke from it but before you go i just want to show you one last thing do you remember that pen nib i found the number two f i'm going to attempt to make a postcard using some ink and this very old 100 year old perhaps pen nib also i'm going to add some thames type as well just to add to the uh, overall effect let's do it so as you can see i need something to hold on to this pen nib so i've decided the best way of doing it is to get some tweezers and hold it like that and dip it into the inkwell just need to take that together and there we go makeshift pen 